Oh yeah? You want to be on? You want to be on a video? No, not really. Okay, well that guy down there is shooting. So don't want to be on a video. I want to look away. Are we in frame yet? Are we in frame yet? <laughs> Are we in frame yet? This week in gambling. This week in gambling. But we're gonna be in frame in just a second. Oh, oh, oh. oh, there we are. Here we go. You ready? I'm ready? This is Jay Todd coming to you from Las Vegas, and here's what's happening this week in gambling. I'm on TV. This Week in Gambling has been made possible by The Gambling Gurus, Casino Reviews, Resort Deals, and Promotions from World-Class Gaming Destinations. Visit TheGamblingGurus.com. Hey everyone, Jay Todd here for This Week in Gambling. We've got another full show with news, interviews, and sock puppets. As you can tell, I'm, I'm very excited about this. So let's get right into it with this week's big story. Everybody's talking about Full Tilt founder and general jackass Ray Batar, who turned himself in to U.S. authorities in New York last week. And the web's all a flutter with stories that the U.S. Department of Justice is seeking over $2.5 billion in forfeitures from the company. So Full Tilt Poker owes players about $400 million. Of course, they only had $60 million, give or take, in their bank accounts. And now the U.S. government is seeking $2.5 billion. Huh. Do you carry the four? Yep, that about makes sense. When he heard that the U.S. DOJ wanted $2.5 billion in forfeitures, Mr. Batar responded, uh, will, will they take a personal check? I don't know if Batar or Full Tilt has money stashed away in the Caymans somewhere, you know, with all these billions of dollars. But, but I tell you what, if they do, my gut tells me Uncle Sam is going to get paid before the players ever do. I, Call me a skeptic. Now, I could say a bunch of really mean and nasty things about this whole situation, but I'm not gonna. Mm -mm. I don't have to. You know why? I've got a sock puppet. Back from his three-week gig at the comedy club in Vancouver, here's Twiggy, the foul-mouthed sock puppet. Seriously? We're gonna, we're gonna let that go. Can, can you show that on the internet? I mean, he's gonna get this show pulled. Seriously. You gotta talk to that guy. Way out of control. We'll be back in a minute. No, you're damn right I'm serious. Find our latest videos, blogs, and articles when you follow us on Tumblr. Visit thisweekingambling.tumblr.com Jack Link's Beef Jerky presents Messing with Sasquatch. Check this out.
Jack Link's Jerky. Feed your wild side. Welcome back. I'd like to take a moment to congratulate Poker Pro and my own dear, close, personal friend, Antonio Esvandiari, for his first place finish at the big one for One Drop Poker Tournament at the World Series in Las Vegas this last week. He took home over $18 million. Really, I just wanted to mention this story so that I could show the picture of me with him and pretend that I actually know the guy. Two weeks ago, we learned that Delaware passed online gambling legislation, making them the first state to regulate full-blown online casino-style gambling. And Nevada has started issuing online poker licenses. With this in mind, I thought I would take the opportunity to share with you my interview with gaming attorney Joseph Kelly a few weeks ago that talks about the possibility of federal gaming regulation in the United States getting passed during the upcoming lame duck session of Congress. This is what Mr. Kelly had to say. Hello folks, Jay Todd coming to you from the floor of the iGaming Super Show in Dublin, Ireland, where I've caught up with Professor Joseph Kelly, one of the most preeminent minds in online gambling law, and he's just finished a lecture about uh, the state-by-state -state likelihood of online gambling legalization in the United States. I'm sure the players out there are very curious to hear your thoughts on when this is going to get done, this year, next year? Well, I don't think anything's going to get done at the federal level. Um, the votes just aren't there. So the bills that are now before the committee will simply die. And I don't think that there'll be any attempt uh, that will be successful in attaching an online poker bill to some other must-pass bill during the lame duck session of Congress. So that leaves us with the states. And the states are encouraged because the Justice Department in a 20, <coughs> two, uh, December 2011 memorandum said that the Wire Act applies only to sports wagering. And the Wire Act was the statute most used by the Justice Department in going after online internet gambling. And this also means that the states now, in my opinion, can set up and regulate non-sports internet gambling. And I even think they can set up interstate compacts between states. And I know the Virgin Islands is trying to do it, and other states might be doing it. So let's just cross our fingers. If online gambling did become legal in the United States, I know New Jersey thinks that they will be able to take offshore bets or bets from other states. What are the implications for online gambling in a global market? Well, I think we'll be joining the vast majority of other countries in that online gambling is here to stay and the operators should be suitable, solvent, and they must engage in socially responsible policies and the player's going to have some protection. After all, if you're dealing with some entity that's out in outer space and you're playing a lot of money on online poker and they tell you that red shows up in roulette, well, red may or may not show up in roulette if you bet black. But if you're dealing with a reputable, licensed online entity, they will be truthful in telling you the outcome of your bets. All right. Well, thank you very much. I know that you're a busy man. I appreciate you taking the time to come on and talk to the players. Give daddy some sugar.